No way, that's a black car. <laughs> he's digging, he's digging. No way! Check this out! In the longleaf pine forests of South Mississippi, there's a snake so rare, so endangered, we're at risk at losing them in the wild forever. These phantoms of the forest are rarely seen by people, and are only found in naturally occurring longleaf pine forests. Today, we're looking for the black pine snake. All right guys, so right now we are heading to DeSoto National Forest. Now this is a huge area. It's one of the last naturally occurring pine forests that hasn't been completely cleared. And this is a very, very important habitat for pine snakes. DeSoto National Forest is a very important stronghold for the black pine snake. It also harbors some very unique species of plants and animals. Have a look at this right here, this is crazy. This is one of the few areas that you'll actually naturally find pitcher plants. Now of course, you can't remove them from the area, they're very protected, but this is beautiful. Feel them. Now these are actually a predatory plant. Uh, they eat bugs, they've got a little sugary substance in the base of them that attracts insects. And when the insects go down there, the lid shuts, they get trapped by all these little sticky hairs on the plant, and then they have their meal which is absolutely insane. They're very fragile, so I don't want to mess with them too much. And you can actually spot tree frogs down in the, uh, the pitcher plants. They're really similar to Venus flytraps in the sense that they're a predatory plant. So it's uh, really cool to see out here. But uh, that's not what we're here to look for. We're here to look for snakes. Oh, check this out. Snake, rat snake. Whoop, it's all right. It's climbing up that little tree right there. It'll be pretty heated up for the day. Woo, he's whippy. Whippy little snake. Now technically here, this would be a gray rat snake, but this is only a young one. When they grow up, they get really, really big and brown. They'll oftentimes be a bronze color in this area. Now they are a very, very good climbing snake. They can scale straight up these trees, as you just saw. And uh, this is definitely only a yearling. They've got square belly scales, and that's meant for climbing straight up these little trees. They've got a pretty decent bite, but of course they are non-venomous. They eat mice, rats, birds. But out here, I'd have to guess that this little guy, it's all right, calm down. They'd mostly just be eating lizards, which is a really cool snake to see out here. They're very common, and I find them in lots of other areas, but they do well in this habitat, too. All right, I'm gonna go put him down, and uh, we're gonna keep looking. Here you go, bud. With so much space to cover, it can be a bit difficult to decide how to look for wildlife. A good way to look for snakes in these areas is to check the bases of trees and check under the bark of rotting pine logs. Oh, snake! Hey. Snake snake. Oh, check this out. Oh, it's a little smooth earth snake. Check that little guy out. This is a very common species out here. They like these little lowland bottoms because they can catch worms under these logs. You'll often find them in the bark. The more common one out here is actually the rough earth snake. Very cute little guy. Look at that. This is actually a full grown smooth earth snake. So they don't get any bigger than this. They mostly spend their time underground so uh, they're not oftentimes seen, but the best way to find them is actually flipping logs and uh, checking around bark. All right, I'm gonna put him back under his bark. Uh, I don't think I ripped it off fully, so he can just kind of slide right back down there. Awesome. Cool. Let's keep going. Now, if you have a look at this right here, a forestry company actually comes out here and chops down uh, dead or rotting trees, or uh, even helps clean up trees that have been knocked over by uh, Tornadoes, hurricanes, Hurricane Katrina really nailed this place. But there's so many trees that they planted here that uh, they cut them down and it becomes habitat for new snakes. So you'll get scarlet king snakes, pine snakes that all live along these logs. And eventually this will look a lot more natural like the rest of the area. But uh, most likely a small tornado touched down right here, knocked out this little section of trees, and that's why they had to go and chop them all down to uh, basically clear it up and keep it safe for people to walk by. But it's also really good for the snakes that live here too, so it's a good thing overall. There's a speck. Speckle kick. Speckle kick. Got it. Got him, got him. Have a look at this little guy. This is another common species. I always love finding these. It's a speckled king snake. It's a little guy, probably only a yearling. Have a look at his face. Beautiful face. They've got a really cool pattern in this part of Mississippi. It's got a bright coloration, a lot of spots on him. 
rattling his tail there. And I would have to guess that this is a little baby female because it's got a little short tail. But uh, that's just a guess. I'm not 100%. Now, king snakes will eat other snake species. And out here, he'd be hiding in these little pine logs and uh, cruising these open grasslands in search of lizards. But he'll also eat another species that lives here, the scarlet snake, as well as other scarlet king snakes, which is really interesting. Now, I'd also have to guess that one of these would eat a baby of what we're looking for, which is a black pine snake. These guys don't care what kind of snake it is. In fact, one of these guys, full grown, will even try to tackle a rattlesnake. Beautiful little guy. Speckled king snakes range in color greatly, and this is one of my favorite colorations of these guys. The more north you go, the less specklings and bandings that they kind of have on them. Down here in the south, in these wetlands, they have more speckles, and it helps them to. Whoop, it's all right. It helps them to camouflage in these little wetlands. Speckled king snakes are specialized king snakes that live in wetlands mostly. They will live in slightly upland areas, but they have more speckles in these kind of low swampy areas. All right, see you, little buddy. Yes. Out of all the snakes we've searched for, none have been this difficult. It's the world's biggest game of find the needle in the haystack. 800 square miles is the haystack, and only a few hundred snakes that mostly live underground are the needles. We've been searching long and hard, days, weeks, even months, with no signs of our snake. But finally, our search has come to an end today. No way, that's a black fern. <laughs> he's digging, he's digging. No way! Check this out! <laughs> this is exactly who we're looking for out here. This is a black pine snake. Have a look at that snake. Obsidian black. Yes! That is an insanely rare snake. I figured that this was a good area to see these guys, but the chances are slim to none. Absolutely gorgeous. Hello. Hello, are you hissing at me? These guys, Sometimes will be a little bit bitey, but more often than not, they'll just hiss at you. And they've got a loud bellowing hiss, like a when you pick them up. They kind of blow out a lot of air. They puff themselves up to look really big. They're related to the bull snake. And in fact, another name for this snake is actually the black bull snake, which technically they're a pine snake, but they are very closely related. Have a look at that belly. Beautiful black. He's got a pinkish whitish nose, I don't know how to describe that color, and he's got a digging nose. When we walked up, we disturbed him, and he started digging straight down into the pine needles. And that's definitely the way to lose this snake, is you'll see it, he'll burrow into the pine needles, and right under those pine needles, he'll have a burrow or an old pine stump that he would live in. And uh, that's the way these guys get away from people. Now, this is a snake that you'll normally find out in the open. This is not a snake species that you'll find under stuff most often, but the babies tend to live in pine stumps and as well as underground. This is the best time of year to find these snakes because they're out looking for a mate, and they're also out looking for more pocket gopher burrows. Now, this is not considered to be the rarest snake in North America. That would actually belong to this snake's cousin, the Louisiana pine snake. Louisiana pines, there's considered to be less than 200 left in the wild, but the pine snake species as a whole are some of the rarest snakes in North America. So this is incredible. They're rarely seen. One of the number one places that these guys are actually seen are on the roads in the springtime. That's when most people actually see this snake. And unfortunately, people still kill this snake. Out here, people just don't know about them. They don't know that this is a special animal, and a lot of people still hate snakes. So they'll hit them with their cars, they'll shoot them, lots of terrible stuff. And that's something we don't want to see happening to this snake. And that's why education and conservation are so important. Letting people know that this is a rare species and that they're a very important species to this ecosystem especially. They're considered an indicator species. They indicate when an environment is healthy. This pine forest is very protected land and it's been given time to rest and recover from being clear. And that's why these snakes are able to live here. These guys have habitat that's being protected over 800 square miles. So hopefully we'll be able to bring these guys, as well as many of the other rare snakes that live in these areas, back right out in front of their habitat. I'm glad he's not striking at me. They normally won't musk on you, but uh, sometimes they will be a little bit aggressive, but this one is perfectly gentle. Pine snakes can be a real hit or miss when it comes to their disposition, but uh, this one's really well out. I don't think he's got a tracker on him, but half the snakes out here of this species actually have trackers in them. They're a very monitored species, and they are endangered throughout their range. Very rare snake. Less than 500 of these guys supposedly have been found in the last few, few decades. 
So uh, as you can imagine, this is a pretty rare occurrence. Oftentimes the best way that they're studied is in uh, wall traps, reptile wall traps, where big study groups will come out here, check the traps, and uh, they'll have these guys in them where they'll get their data, put a tracker in them, and then let them go back on their way. But uh, these guys also have really good breeding programs. They're a species that does very well in captivity with uh, very good research groups. There's lots of different conservation organizations that do an excellent job of breeding this snake. And uh, that's something that these snakes need to have continued because they're not a very well-known species. Not many people know about this snake, and that's why I'm here to show you guys this snake. I'm here to bring notice to these kinds of species, ones that aren't very well known, but really, really need our help. And that's one thing that's beautiful about the black pine, is that they are just such an endangered species that we really need to do our best to protect. And uh, I'm really glad that we got to show you guys this snake. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you did enjoy, definitely leave a like. And I will see you guys next time. All right, we're going to go let this snake on its way. All right, see you, baby. Ooh, ooh.